Mario Kart 8, the most successful Switch game as of December 2022 at least. Of course this game is going to receive DLC, we said five years ago. The announcement came at the tail end of the February 2022 Nintendo Direct, announced as there was rumors and, well, blatant desperation for Mario Kart 9, and we were ready for some new stuff. So at first the announcement of remastered tracks was a little disappointing, but the fact that we were getting 48 released over waves until the end of 2023 sounded amazing all for a good price. That was doubling the base game's total amount of tracks, and tracks are honestly the very core of Mario Kart, the f*** else are you gonna do? But there was something off about this DLC that I noticed from the very start, and was insanely confused why no one else was commenting on this, even among my friends. The visuals, they, what is this? Let's take a trip through time for a moment. I loved the original Mario Kart 8 on Wii U, probably had maybe between 50 to 100 hours. In Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I have 285 hours, and maybe 40 of those at most were after the DLC had began to release. So I have a lot of fondness for this game, and when you play the same tracks over and over and over, memorizing all these layouts, you begin to appreciate all the little things that you might not notice at first. Things like the stellar visuals and the fantastic big band orchestral soundtrack. That, alongside online multiplayer so the races and skill level feel different and more challenging each time, kept me playing this game for a long time. My point being, there's going to be a lot less to appreciate replaying these new tracks over and over and over. Sure, they look okay, but I think you got to admit, this is an objective downgrade, at least for Wave 1. We'll talk about other waves later. But fret no more, for I have discovered the culprit behind the stolen textures, and that culprit would be none other than Mario Kart Tour. For those of you who don't know, Mario Kart Tour is a mobile version of Mario Kart that rotates tracks every two weeks for a tour themed around some style or type of place. So this game has some unique tracks in it, as well as remastering a bunch of old tracks, a lot from Mario Kart 7, and recently a lot of GBA tracks to give them more elevation and style compared to their original versions. My point with all this being that it's clear these tracks all get ported from Tour into the new booster course pass and hence why there's such a difference in both visual quality and style to the regular base game. But I know Nintendo can do better than just porting all these tracks from a mobile game. However, Mario Kart 2 might just be the only reason we're getting the booster course pass at all. But just look at the base game, detailed textures and modeling galore. Maybe these courses would be acceptable because we always throw around the excuse that, oh, the Switch can't handle anything too intensive, poor little guy. But we've already seen how well they can optimize the visuals in these tracks on a last generation console in 2014. There is an eight year difference between these. Just comparing these courses side by side, it's so apparent that these remastered tracks are pretty lazy ports from Tour with the Mario Kart 8 lighting engine and a few enhanced and borrowed textures. Some Sometimes. I hate what they do with grass and mountains especially in this pass. No actual realistic textures whatsoever for the mountains, just modelled in super chiselled rocks and boulders that could just fall apart as soon as they're given a slight nudge. And the grass is just completely flat colour. Ugh. And there are of course the trees, the biggest indicator, along with any instances of text, that the style here is completely different, less realistic and less detailed. It's not like you don't notice it either, and some of these it's just, bro, this is night and day. They are just worse, and they don't look completely awful, but they're a bit jarring at the very least. I guess one defense could be the pricing, getting about one track for 50 cents USD is a pretty great deal, and 48 of them at that. But as YouTuber Silacorp pointed out, the original Mario Kart 8 Wii U DLC came out to around 75 cents USD per track if you value the extra character and cart parts included at zero dollars. With rough estimates for those extras, you could arguably say the tracks in there were also sold for 50 cents USD each, and more than half of them were brand new track designs with their own unique assets. Same for the battle tracks created for the new battle mode in Deluxe, they look Great! This was five years ago. I have to assume there's a reason for putting what is likely an entirely new team onto this booster course pass. I personally think it's because a Mario Kart 8 sequel might be in the works, but Nintendo saw just how well Mario Kart 8 is sold that they thought they couldn't possibly waste this chance to make even more money from this game, potentially more than a Mario Kart 9 would even sell. So they threw the mobile team onto the booster course pass, the ones who created the new and remastered Mario Kart 2 attracts and said, hey, Sub together a quick selection here that'll be a bit of fun for the fans. But although this style works well for a mobile game, it doesn't translate very well to a high definition console. Especially when half the game has already cemented a gorgeous style for its own. But one bonus in all this is that compared to the original Mario Kart 8 DLC for Wii U, you don't have to pay for the booster course pass to play these tracks online. Which is quite cool as it doesn't completely split the online player base in half into who can and can't select these tracks. If someone in your lobby also has paid for the DLC, you can vote for them in that lobby without owning it too. And online is probably the place Mario Kart 8 veterans will be playing these tracks the most, so this is one of the only arguments in favour of the 
clearly lower budget for this whole DLC course pass. Wave 1 launched to some very eager fans on March 18th, 2022. Constant refreshing of the game and checking for updates were abound. We were very nervous to see just how well these tracks would be implemented. Turned out they got their own extra menu here with a nice purple background and icons that match the style of the base game. This was something I was genuinely worried about, just the possibility of these tracks being absolutely hacked into the game with zero grace. But luckily, Everyone besides the guys responsible for the lackluster visual design brought their A game and we got all new Big Band remixes Mario Kart 8 style for every song here and that made me so happy to see an attempt to organically introduce 48 new tracks. So first up in wave 1 of the DLC we have the Golden Dash Cup where now with the booster course pass we have the chance to get a more permanent access to the tour exclusive tracks since that game rotates them around constantly and they rarely see the light of day. That being said the first couple tour city tracks are pretty boring being placed at the start of every cup. First up up we got Tua Paris Promenade which sends us around a little city area then gliding through the Eiffel Tower and then dodging a piranha plant. That's about it, you do it again but on the third lap we see these strange arrows sending us around this little side street and back around to do the entire thing backwards which is a pretty cool idea. The original Tua City tracks had different variants like 1, 2 and 3 and even 4 sometimes with different alternate parts. So what they did here, so we didn't have to get 4 instances of the same track, is merge them all into one. Unfortunately, Paris is just consists of doing the track backwards, but they still incorporated that into the track design and I think that's pretty cool, but otherwise it's still a fairly flat track. And my god, do things like these untextured planter boxes and the really flat buildings not work for me. Next up is 3DS Toad Circuit, we're hitting the ground running with this one! First off with the good. The remix of this song really hit me with the Whoa, yeah, there are new Mario Kart 8 tracks, I love how well it fits. The track itself isn't the worst basic circuit track you could pick, but it is pretty nothing. It has a glider ramp that opens up later to go over a bridge and a tunnel and a shortcut bit, but that's about it. Now for the elephant in the room. The textures here are a Abysmal. I've gone on about them enough, but when your whole track is outside and your natural textures are this flat, it doesn't do your track a whole lot of favors. When the 3DS version looks better, my god, look at this vibrant, green, beautiful grass. Man, you know you messed this up. And while we're here, I may as well mention how much I hate this starting line. It's such a pet peeve at this point, but it looks so unnatural jutting out of the ground like that. And it's like that for every track here. Next up is N64 Choco Mountain, which might just suit the new visual style the best out of this wave. Like, it doesn't look completely horrible. The cartoony, untextured wood here is still gross of course, but as for the track itself compared to the N64 original, this version is pretty good, with creating a bit more of an identity for itself with the cave and glider section. I like these changes. This cave though, something about how it looks is completely uncanny, it just doesn't fit right and looks so amateurish with all these stupid jagged rocks everywhere. This cave should not be standing up like that, it makes literally no sense. Now, We Coconut Mall. This is a beloved track. I love this track. It's not my favourite, but it's great. But it doesn't look great here at all. First of all, I hate the text they use in this pass in general, just the standard Mario font on everything. It looks incredibly lifeless, so compare it to the original signpost outside. But the track is still pretty fun, it does feel less chaotic in a lot of ways, but it's hard to tell if that's a track design thing or a different physics engine across Mario Kart 8 and Wii thing. Just little things sort of annoy me here, I wish they kept these steps instead of these harsh green ramps, because they clash a lot with the orangey colour scheme they went for here. The top glider section not being glass anymore, this little ramp outside with an item box on it is gone, the dodging of the cars to try and gain some speed from the booster pads in the final section, all just gone. They did later on add some movement to the cars, which can be pretty intense, but you can still just swerve out to the side and dodge them left and then right, but before you risk going near them in reward for a speed boost, which I thought was more engaging. It just doesn't feel like a shopping center overall anymore, it feels like a cheap theme park, especially with these brightly colored conveyor belts that make no sense being a shopping center, f*** you, I'm not saying mall. It was so much better trying to figure out which way to go in the original. And I reckon they could have made these jumps send you a lot higher if they wanted, especially on parts like these trees and the water fountains. Also, I hate these tracks for these stupid little curves and things like this. This is stupid, f*** these little divots, just make it go straight. Please, I don't care how the guys in the car park are gonna get out, they can stay there for all I care. But I guess it's still Coconut Mall, it's still fun, especially online with real players all cramped in these tight spaces, but it's not quite right to me. The music slaps though, great remix. Following after the Golden Dash Cup is the Lucky Cat Cup, beginning with Tour Tokyo Blur. Another fairly bland one, it doesn't feel like the best representation of Tokyo, a huge sprawling city, but it does okay. At least this one has multiple routes per lap, once around the temple area, once through some streets and thwomps, and once through the highway. That's probably the best lap, and doing three different routes is an awesome idea. But the usual complaints still apply, I hate to be that guy, but this water looks awful and the buildings are extremely flat and stylized. Like compare these cities to Cooper City. 
I'm sorry. No ill intent to anyone who likes these courses. I still have fun with them. I really do. I'm just thinking long term with these here. I just want to make sure my stance is clear. And next up is Shroom Ridge. Oh, for fuck's sake, guys. Please, I take it back. Can we go back to Tokyo? There is no texture here. But you know what? This track is awesome too. That's the saddest part. Sure, the traffic makes no sense. It would be cool if, like, the original the cars went different ways. But, I mean, they're literally driving around a circle over and over. So I don't think there was much logic here to begin with anyway. But this music is an absolute groove. And the cars are so fun to dodge with this nasty shortcut off the cliff at the end. This track, honestly, online, feels phenomenal. But guys, did I mention the visuals actually ruin the whole thing? And here we are at Sky Garden, which retains almost nothing good about the original. Sure, it adds some curves and stuff. I mean, this section would have been perfect. Perfect for anti grav, but what do I know? It just ends up as shitty cloud top cruise. I want my green floor back. This course is okay, that's about it, really. I don't know what else to say about it. They cut out huge sections of the original layout, it's just pretty eh, no matter how much the music slaps. And finally, we've arrived at the end with Tua Ninja Hideaway, I mean, Nintendo Switch Ninja Hideaway, because they forgot to show the prefix, so. Sure guys, pretend this is from Nintendo Switch even though it's not at all because it appeared in Tua like forever ago. Who knows, maybe the original intent was to create this course for Mario Kart 8, but it sure as hell doesn't feel like it at this one turn here. But besides that really hard turn that's just a 90 degree corner, this course is great. It actually feels like something from the base Mario Kart 8, and this is where the visuals are at their best. Sure it's still stylized, but there's a greater extent of detail here. No, it's no base game track, but the banging music and amazing track layout with the consistent top and bottom route throughout the whole thing is amazing. God, this is a difficult track too, I love it. And driving across this roof tiling, this is amazing. I love the theming of this track too, what a great idea. Anyway, after all that, we actually end on a decently high note, despite the jagged, untextured bumps along the way. Overall, I just feel like once this pass is all done, I'm not going to enjoy seeing these shitty Play-Doh tracks be picked over and over again later down the line. It feels so much harder to immerse myself in these worlds. You guys want to see true immersion? You apologists better buckle the f*** up. Like, holy shit, guys, this music. Oh my god, and these sprawling lush woods and treetop structures. Now you're flying through a whole little treetop village and down a floating stream of water down a branch. You want more? Bam, Electrodrome. I hope you brought your f***ing extra pair of legs jumping up and down in this massive rave. And oh my god, what the f***? Driving on side of a dam. Holy shit. Who put all these trees on the road? Guys, I've decided to give up YouTube to become an Olympic skier. I'm just that insane. What? I never thought I'd be so desperate for Wave 2 considering how lackluster the first wave was, but god damn it, Mario Kart is still fun no matter what. And there's still some hope out there, after all, this time we're going to Sydney, this is my hometown, or buddy close enough, it's in Australia. We take what we can get! The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass Wave 2 arrived on August 4th, 2022 after complete radio silence up to a week before they were released, where we saw a very interesting trailer revealing a brand new track not even seen before in tour with anti-gravity on it? They actually figured out how to code it in, guys. What? Wait, what the fuck was that? Oh, uh, nah, railing does not do that last time I checked. I'm gonna cut straight to the chase here. These tracks are better than Wave 1. Track selection-wise, they got the two least interesting Tua City tracks out of the way straight away in Wave 1. So now we could really see what this alternate route thing would offer with these tracks that are brand new to a lot of us. And this time around, the tracks looked a bit better. The tour style and evidence of them just being clearly ported is still there, but they did some nicer touch-ups here and there instead of completely flat textures like before. So to jump straight into it, for the Turnip Cup we have Tua New York Minute, which is quite the city and takes place at night time with all kinds of lights and billboards illuminating the track. But to be honest, although there's some nice shine to the track and whatnot, it still feels like a bunch of toy buildings and the whole thing sort of comes together in something that's just a mess of coloured bloom everywhere. It's so bright! Like, water does not amplify light and colour this much, guys. I'm sorry to have to do this to you all, but, well, there we go. Sure, this dirt track looks nicer than it would have in Wave 1, but I am also just not the biggest fan of the track's layout. It's pretty samey, just kind of, ooh, around the park, and then, wow, around the other way. Then an intersection, and then inside the Rockefeller Center, that last lap is also incredibly short. I don't know, this track is okay, I'd say better than Paris Promenade, but Tokyo Blur has the edge here for me. Better routes, honestly, and better music. Now, blur, alright, SNES Mario Circuit 3. We had to get a Super Mario Kart track, and since Rainbow Road is already in, the only other track I'd want, other than Vanilla Lake, 
if I had to choose would be this exact Mario Circuit track because it's the OG Mario Circuit theme and it's the exact one that was in Mario Kart Wii and that game is way too nostalgic for me. I think they're definitely starting to pander to Mario Kart Wii fans because the people who played that game as kids, aka people my age, are adults now which just feels so so wrong. I was always used to N64 fans getting all the catering growing up. It's also just the most popular Mario Kart game other than this one. The track looks better than Wii for sure here, a pretty faithful remake but it's still incredibly bland. I'm gonna do it again, bam, side by side with the base game SNES track from 8 years ago, I'm just saying. Okay, here's an interesting one, N64 Calamari Desert. This one to start with has pretty great lighting, it could feel close enough to a base game 8 track if the rocks didn't look like that and we got some more detail in the off-road, but it's an alright track visuals wise. I've always kind of liked this track, it's pretty plain, but it's still somehow one of the most chaotic N64 tracks. Getting stuck at the train going around the track is a fun idea and they kept the shortcuts from Mario Kart 7. But this track made a pretty huge change, they implemented the changing routes idea from the rest of the tour city tracks. Basically the original Cal Calamari Desert was pretty infamous for its train tunnel you could drive through for fun. It had no practical purpose, but it was something a kid could have a blast just doing for no reason whatsoever. So this rendition of Calamari Desert actually integrates this into lap 2, having you drive through the tunnel to liven up a pretty dull course. This is a really cool idea, but, and I'm gonna get killed for saying this, I don't exactly like the way they did it, it's pretty janky in my opinion. So this giant ramp just magically spawns in the middle of the railway and has you trick off it at the shittiest angle that I swear always gets me off road, skill issue I suppose, and then onto the tracks, where you just shake around constantly because there's gaps in the road. I just don't like how this track feels man, and this idea shortens the track down a lot, but sure I guess. I would have preferred if this idea were executed differently. I appreciate the booster course pass really doing things to please the fans here, that's awesome. I just feel if that ambition combined with the effort and polish of the base game, we would have an amazing track, but unfortunately it's just not the case this time around for me. But we're getting there. Now for the star of the show, DS Waluigi Pinball. This is the big track of the wave, the fan favourite, and they did absolutely nothing to it. It is literally the exact same as it's always been. It didn't get its own all new remix, it just took the one from Base 8's Wario Stadium because they share the same song. But the fact that it stays exactly the same, just now in the bigger Mario Kart 8, the track's first big console appearance, it gave me a huge feeling of relief. The textures are nice, the items still have their own slot machine sound exclusive to this track, now alongside some of the other best tracks the series has ever seen in the most polished Mario Kart game ever. Sure, they could have added some anti-grav here, it would have made a lot of sense. Heck, there's even a blue light around the edges here that would make it seem like it should be anti-grav. Maybe it could have worked even in the pinball area too. But oh well, we still got a faithful Waluigi pinball, and there's nothing wrong with that. Oh boy, onto the Propeller Cup with Tua Sydney Sprint. Good old Australia, this track is a great time. Visuals wise, it's the most lively track of them all. Going through Luna Park, moving trains, boats, gliding over the harbour. This course is just lovely and I'm so happy that Australia has such a fun city track. And people will know we don't just live in a desert and ride kangaroos to school. Also, amazing music. Holy crap. Sax guy is going off. So you start off going through the Sydney Opera House, gliding over the water and into Luna Park with all the cute attractions everywhere. Then over the Sydney Harbour Bridge and down the freeway. Then on the second lap, wow is the second lap crazy, leaping over a ferry through a stroll in the park with some great shortcuts to take boats sprinkled throughout the water. Then we start to loop back around to cross the bridge backwards, now able to access all the trick ramps that bound the thing. Then, no it's still not over, you glide back over through the opera house once again into lap 3 going backwards through lap 1. This track is so fun and I'm so happy, can you guys tell? Alright now let's not get too ahead of ourselves because up next we have GBA Snowland. Now it's nice they revamped the GBA tracks a lot more than the SNES ones because both are pretty flat and we get these cozy little themes expanded into a pretty nice track. And this one does look nice, it's cute with the penguins skiing around, we've got slippery ice physics around this hairpin turn, but that's kind of about it. I really like the aesthetic of this track, the crystals are nice and it's all open, you can see the entire track from pretty much anywhere, which is really cool, and they were faithful to the original track layout unlike Sky Garden, but not all too much else was added, so it just leaves a fairly okay track, nothing all too exciting however. We Mushroom Gorge, another beloved track, it isn't the most complicated of tracks out there, and can either be a great fun time jumping across all the mushrooms, or hell on earth as you miss the jumps and get absolutely Mario carded into the void. I personally adore this track, and I'm so glad it feels pretty much exactly the same, if not better, due to the less janky air physics Mario Kart 8 has over Wii. And they're really treating us fans with Wave 2, because the gap jump is back, I love doing it to piss off my friends who think I'm way too sweaty. And they've got the shortcut near the start with these mushrooms, super risky but so fun, I love it. And they've made this whole cave area now have three routes. The original top route and bottom route are on the left and right as they should be. And the Mario Kart 7 route with the glider mushroom goes right through the middle. Great choice. Best of both worlds. I love it. <sighs> it's just too bad. It looks pretty bad. I absolutely loathe this style in more natural settings. 
Guys, get ready, guys. Are you ready? Because... Oh. Oh. Oh, there it is. Wow. Haha. <laughs> Who slipped that in there? Oh, and the music has barely been changed. It's still changed quite nicely to sound less digital. I'm pretty happy with that, and I'm still happy with this track, and I'm still going to pick it all the time, because it doesn't feel that bad. It just looks bad. Ideally, it would look nicer, but this track wasn't exactly the biggest looker anyways. Just the miss potential sucks, and still has that overall effect on the game alongside the entire booster course pass of making it feel completely disjointed and jarring in silent quality. Just imagining what these tracks could have looked like in the regular base game. And now, Sky High Sunday. The track that might have just been made for tour, but debuted in 8 first. Look, they gave us anti-grav, but it's still a baby step in the right direction of creating super exciting tracks like Mario Kart 8 did first, 8 years ago. I still just don't like this one that much. It's not awful, gliding around at the start is fun, but the rest is just an oval and a bunch of blind jumps that just feel gross. I'm not the biggest fan of this one, and... Mmm, mmm, ah, uh, ooh, no, guys, railings don't do this, please, oh, no. Yeah, so this track is just okay, it's nothing too special in my eyes, unfortunately, but I appreciate the effort. So that's Brewster Course Pass Wave 2, we had some improvements in visuals and some cool new ideas thrown in there, it just needs some more polish to get there. Maybe this game would be just too powerful with 48 tracks as polished as the base 48, but we can sure hope for the future. But I swear to god, if you fuckers mess up DK Summit, there will be blood. Wave 3 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass was off to a great start the moment we got a leak from the Wave 2 update, where we got the first 5 seconds of every Wave 3 song in the exact order they would release in, and then they switched Waluigi Stadium for Maple Tree Way. We had some amazing tracks in the lineup here, one of which of course being the first original tour track besides the city's, Merry Mountain, that also refuses to have a tour prefix in the game just like Ninja Hideaway, even though they debuted in that game years ago, and they keep pretending these tracks are brand new for the Booster Course Pass. Guys, no one believes you, please stop. Anyway, the the reason this course was notable in particular was because it had half pipes, which were only in Mario Kart Wii and allowed players to trick off them into the air and allowed for some really great course design and the fact that they were coming back was great. So to start us off with the Rock Cup is another tour city track, London Loop. Some people might understandably be getting a bit sick of these tour city tracks, but I'm still happy we're getting a great way to preserve them, and there's still some great ones to come down the line, all just jam-packed with landmarks just put into all of them. However, London Loop is pretty dead. It's another step up visually from other similar city tracks, and the added fog everywhere adds some lovely ambience, and the music is pretty good. But as I said, the track is pretty dead. There are chain chops running around, and lots of bends and turns, a market area on the outside of Buckingham Palace, but nothing really strikes you, the most notable thing in the track for me is when the chain chomps start running loose and you drive alongside one just booking it through the water. Next up is GBA Boo Lake, the third GBA track remade in this booster course pass and this one is their best yet. Actually it wasn't even a lake, it was just a pit. It is now actually a lake with water textures that look half decent, various levels of elevation scattered all over the place, textures in general over the wood that makes the whole thing look a lot more pleasant than other waves, and they have a whole anti-gravity section implemented perfectly into the track design, contrast to Sky High Sunday. The only problem with this track is the short length, otherwise it's the perfect blend of a faithful layout and some nice innovation. To follow is 3DS Alpine Pass, or Rock Rock Mountain, way worse name. And this one is, uh, a bit disappointing. This was one of my favourite tracks in Mario Kart 7. God, I played that game as a child, and that was like 11 years ago. It was just amazing being up so high in the sky and gliding down across the abyss and over the forest. I was always quite fond of this one. But the visuals, we're back at it again in Plastic Land. It's just so embarrassing when the original 3DS version looks better and more detailed. But what is cool is the anti-grav section and the boosters. They're actually starting to try to adapt these tracks for anti-gravity. But otherwise, this track is sadly a fairly lackluster port. Part of why I loved this track so much initially was the atmosphere and just like, wow, I'm gliding through nature so high up, high above the clouds. This is great. So it's a bit annoying that this was the one they continue to drop the ball with visually. But to end the cup is Maple Tree Way, and they really tried to make the style work with this one, and I'd say they did a pretty nice job. The music for one, where the original was quite calm and peaceful, this one is fantastical, whimsical, graceful. It's so lovely and exactly what I'd imagine a Mario Kart 8 Maple Tree Way would sound like. It can be hard to appreciate the detailed wood and autumn leaf textures here, simply because the base game just would have done a bit better, like with these ultra polygonal background trees, ugh, yuck, go away. But for the main track itself, I have to admit, it is nice. 
It isn't completely ruined just because it doesn't absolutely spoil you with the most gorgeous visuals you've ever seen. As for how the track plays, it's as great as ever. One of the longest tracks in the game alongside Waluigi Pinball, and I'm not complaining as this was one of my favourite Mario Kart tracks ever. It's got the cannon to sort through the trees, all piles of leaves that are so satisfying to plough through and snag an item, the big wiggler area to dodge around and the half pipe section is back in spite of its removal in Mario Kart 7, and it works like a dream. It's a bit weird that it's basically just an anti-gravity strip that boosts you upwards, but it it feels awesome and feels better than the original floaty physics in Wii. All the more build up to DK Summit, the half pipes would be amazing in it. Please Nintendo. This track is pretty damn great though, I'm quite happy with this one, I say as I let out a big sigh of relief as Maple True A's back like it never left. Oh, and the bridge isn't there from Wii, wow wow, they still have the glider section from 7, but I don't mind. Oh, and speaking of which, Wave 3 has made changes to the way the game works, making it so you can't lose your glider if you get shocked by lightning, which is awesome. No more bullshit target shocking, you sweaty online f they also made it so heavier vehicles don't get as long of an invulnerability against items, so get shit on Waluigi Wiggler meta abusers. We got something similar in Wave 2, where they randomly made a balance change to the item boxes, making them reappear faster. All this stuff is great. Not to mention they also added the feature of custom items for versus races, which is also amazing. A great idea for fun custom races full of blue shell bullshit. So coming out of that little intermission and into Moon Cup, we start out with Tour Berlin Byways, which is a pretty chaotic track. It's very twisty with lots of changing routes and parts all over the place. Nothing quite as simple as just a backwards version of the same lap. Instead, we take all different routes around this central roundabout, once to a train station and alongside a nice water feature, then gliding over some traffic, all of which by the way you're driving with or against and all over the place, driving past them to squeeze through these islands and then around again through a park and crossing over the road you literally just went through, likely hitting some drivers on the way. Then you circle around some womps just trying to take you out, through the park again and under some thorns to end it off as the banger music sends you through and over the finish line. I had a blast with this track, it reminds me in some ways of Wii's Moonview Highway dodging the super chaotic traffic. It is awesome and very lively. Another great city track that joins Sydney that stands out super well. Now to follow is DS Peach Gardens, a track I liked a lot when I first played it in DS and then in Wii. And this track actually looks really nice. If you aren't ridiculously nitpicky about the super small stylistic differences, this really could fit in the base game of 8. And that's so nice to me, and over this beautiful arrangement of the theme, this track feels perfect in its atmosphere. The detailed shrubbery everywhere, and these awesome changes with the statues of the characters everywhere in high res, it looks lovely. Wave 1 could never. To move through the track, they made a change that you couldn't go around the other way here, I guess to try and make people less confused. Sure, I guess, we've still got the shortcut here through the grass, and then the next set of garden beds too. Oh, okay, they made this part a lot smaller, which is a bit annoying, it shortens the track a bit and makes the track as a whole less of an active effort, and they did it again later on too. Oh well, I guess it's not the end of the world really. A lot of these changes aren't, it's still pretty nice, and they aren't completely game changing in any way. I wish however they had kept the item boxes at the end of the chain chomps in the large open area, but this area still feels great. It could be argued that the trimming of the hedges makes it feel less maze-like, but I also enjoy seeing everyone all scattered everywhere at once, and seeing everything also makes it feel bigger. It's a weird trade-off, but I quite like the new look to be honest. And they've added a piranha plant here to chomp you if you get too close, interesting change I'm happy with, but they removed the shortcut ramp and trees in the last section which is a bit annoying. Wow, that was absolutely all over the place. So we do the whole thing again, but then on lap 3, these arrows appear. Oh no, what is this? Oh, we're using the unused path from the original to do the whole thing backwards? I'm not gonna lie, I thought this was pretty silly at first, but I think that gliding over the huge open part and giving Luigi a high five is what sold it for me. Driving through backwards is pretty inoffensive and something different to do and otherwise a pretty tame track, so honestly I kind of warmed up to the idea, because it's not implemented poorly at all, unlike my opinions on Calamari Desert's execution of a lap change idea. I think it's a fun bit of variety and I grew to really enjoy the track overall because of it. It sort of saves this version for me with the changing of the flower beds, removal of the chain chomps item boxes and the flattening of the end segment. Plus Pyrrhus still have the first two laps to enjoy anyway. Now for one of my most anticipated tracks, Merry Mountain. I saw this track in Tua years ago and never really got to play it, and thought wouldn't it be amazing if this was in the next Mario Kart game? And now, here we are. And wow, this one also looks great. The more cartoony style of the booster course pass actually feels at home in this track as it's actually supposed to be a Christmas North Pole Winter Wonderland. This track is just so pleasant. And here is definitive proof that just because a track has a different style, it's no excuse not to be super detailed because wow, look at this lovely brick pathing with the red and green, oh and the cute little houses and stalls everywhere in the Christmas village, and the train sleigh combo thing siding out along the tracks but eventually soaring through the skies. Guys, I feel like a kid again. We twist and wind up the path and it just 
It just feels right. It feels like Mario Kart 8, a pretty simplistic track, but it's so cozy and designed so well. Unlike Ninja Hideaway's more sharp turns that could be a bit jarring at times, no matter how fun that course was. You can go along up the train tracks and trick off it, or just climb the snow mountain the normal way. And then you start to see the mountain of presence at the summit ahead. We drop to the snow that looks pretty great, mind you. Perfect for say, I don't know, DK Summit, please Nintendo, please! And then bam, we trick right off an anti-grav strip and then over a half pipe and through a ring of items, following the train back down the mountain on the second and final lap, gliding over for a lovely view over the town. This track has everything I could have wanted from it. It's new, it's twisty, it's the reason we have half pipes back. As corny as it sounds, it's a Christmas miracle. But no, we're not even done, because we're ending off Moon Cup with 3DS Rainbow Road, my favorite Rainbow Road of the whole Mario Kart series. My nostalgic heart can't take anymore. Sure, this track's visual style might not exactly be what Base 8 would do, but it's still nice regardless. The road is very interesting. I kind of like it. You can kind of see through it, and it moves with these blue outlines around it. And it's got a very lovely PNG of a galaxy around it. Jokes aside, I really enjoy the atmosphere the background creates. So the track begins at Section 1. Yes, Section 1, not Lap 1, hence why it's the best rainbow road. It's a true finale. Anyway, we begin over some boost ramps and then circle around a planet, leaping over a mushroom and trying to snag some item boxes over a wavy road. We launch over a gliding section and around the rings of Saturn, grabbing some boost spots ahead and then trying to avoid falling off the track onto the moon below, right as the music hits the N64 Rainbow Road motif and the sun glares the camera. You drop off to the moon with anti-grav as you trick off the craters and avoid some rolling chain chomps. Then the last section has you speeding along the track, through this tube, all trying to go on the fastest route possible, and then you're shot through a gliding section, boosting through these floating star ranks to end it all, right before the finish. This track is an absolute joy. They knocked it out of the park with this one by the mere inclusion of it, and it doesn't look ugly. That's about all I can ask for, it isn't completely jarring. Sure, Wave 3 isn't perfect, but I'm really happy with it anyway. If we can keep going up with the quality, I'm really looking forward to next year's Booster Course Pass Waves. It's a true gift to be getting Mario Kart 8 tracks, and so many of them throughout 2022. So long as everything is to the quality of the Moon Cup, I'll be happily driving along through 2023. And if it's not exactly up to snuff, I'll be sure to complain some more. But regardless of if that happens or not, I'll have always enjoyed Wave 3 as a lovely way to end the first year of the Booster Course Pass. It feels like a great finale to 2022. Merry Christmas everyone, and Happy New Year! I swear to God, if you this mess up DK Summit, there will be blood. All the more build up to DK Summit, the half types would be amazing in it. Please Nintendo! We drop to the snow that looks pretty great, mind you. Perfect for, say, I don't know, DK Summit. Please, Nintendo, please! It's beautiful. Welcome back to Manchild Values, a single Mario Kart track more than his loved ones. We're here today taking a look at the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DK Summit DLC. Nope. The Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DK Summit Booster Course Pass. Nope. Donkey Kong Kart 8 DK Summit Pass. Nope. I'm still not sorry for robbing that old decrepit grandma. The Mario Kart 8 Summit Pass Donkey Kong Pass. What the f***? DK Summit. F okay, I'm clearly excited about a certain track in particular. Fuck. This is the Mario Kart 8 Booster Course Pass Wave 4. Meaning there are other tracks here too, so why don't we just get right into it? Tour Amsterdam Drift starts us off as one of the three tour tracks included in this wave. Yikes, okay, so there's a conversation here to be had first of all. Tour tracks can be cool guys, I promise. The city tracks in particular, I mean, but so far we've probably gotten all the worst possible ones. The ones from here on, and especially included in this wave actually, have loads to them. Obstacles and variation across each of their laps rather than just empty streets. I can see why 3 is worthy of complaint however, because we do risk getting an empty course like London Loop, Tokyo Blur, etc. But, I'll tell you that Singapore Speedway, well that is not a bad course at all to end it on. And these city tracks this time around are the ones I've been telling you guys about, the cool ones. Amsterdam has plenty to it. No, it's not super amazing, but pretty damn solid, and I kind of have a soft spot for it with its similarities to some of my personal favorites out there. On lap one, we go through Zanzes Skans, a neighborhood near Amsterdam with Monty Moles and windmills scattered all over, with a cute little bridge and a winding path that we get to in the first place by gliding on over a train and dodging under some windmills. We change over in lap two to the canals, with blasting currents coming from all different directions, shooting us on top of a boat with some lovely looking water throughout. 
Then in lap 3 we briefly re-enter going against oncoming traffic to blast into the gorgeous tulip fields to end off the race. The graphics aren't too flashy on this one, it's a typical tour city track style that I've criticised in the past. Very polygonal assets, lacklustre grass textures, the plain tour trees, untextured buildings. But as you drive through all the different parts of the city with such a lively atmosphere throughout with so many things to look at, that sort of thing really didn't cross my mind that much with how much detail and gameplay variety there is here. Now for GBA Riverside Park with some groundbreaking discoveries, this one has grass and rock textures. Amazing! Jokes aside, having detailed textures on the rocks for once actually makes them look normal. I've hated these jagged untextured rocks for a long time, but this track is proof that all they needed to do was add texture to them. This is so confusing to me however, because I don't understand why this is just starting now instead of being there from the start. I just don't get it, and it's not even consistent throughout the rest of the wave as I'll cover soon. But these complaints for the rest of the DLC have no place here. Sure, the style of most of the DLC tracks clash with the established style of the game they are already in, and this track is no different with the inconsistent trees, but I've accepted that at this point and I'm just happy this track looks nice. The swampy sunset surroundings with the gorgeous water and waterfall that you shoot through, the dense lush greenery in the background, this is the feel you would imagine as a kid for this track in all its original 32-bit glory. Also love the addition of new enemies to populate this otherwise pretty basic track. The Tui, yes, that's what they're called, and they hold items with their breath. This track has definitely received a very nice glow up going from its original, with Tui to create the base for this game to expand on with new enemies, textures, and lighting, but it's quite the short track, with some slight cut corners from the original even making it shorter than it needs to be. And there isn't all too much notable other than the swirling cave section, which don't get me wrong, is awesome, but does not carry this wave enough to soaring new heights. But you know what does? We DK Snowboard Cross, as it's known in the British English version, otherwise known as DK Summit. I have been begging for this track since the booster course pass was announced, as some of you may know, and it's finally here. As soon as I saw they were bringing back half pipes, I knew this had to happen, as well as knowing of its presence in the booster course pass leaked banner image that contained tracks that weren't yet announced at the time of March 2022. This course is my favourite for so many reasons, the physics on these half pipes was just so much fun, flying and tricking all over the place, but yet I could not have anticipated that this one would feel just as good, if not better than the original for me. With my impressions of the returning half pipes from last time in my Wave 3 discussion video, having an anti-gravity effect and having them send you up and down a lot faster, I think the Mario Kart 8 version of this track results in an even smoother, fast-paced and chaotic experience throughout the whole thing that doesn't feel like you're taking too long by being cool and tricking off of literally everything. The time wasted doing tricks just for the sake of it all, flying all over the place, shooting up doing 360s, curving and flying around turns like this that make no sense but works just like the Wii anyway, and playing on 200cc doing these tricks feels absolutely bonkers. This here was a highlight, taking a bit of a detour and slipping into second while soaring so goddamn high, only to catch up a last second and destroy Morton with a super horn. That feels like some crazy Mario Kart Wii shit, but with less time feeling like you're stalled in the air. To go through beat by beat and really show why I love this track so much, first I have to mention the music, which is like 70% of the reason why. This 8 star remix is everything I could have dreamed it would be. The little 1, 2, 3, 4 is there, it's still super synthy with flares of electric guitar in there, it's still got that cold but fast paced feel with punches that hit even harder than before to score your flying descent down the summit. I have a kind of special attachment to this song, being the first outro song I used and continued to use occasionally when I first started making review style content. The music hitting that punch once you land after soaring over a view of the track to come is pure bliss, as you approach the same jumps from before with double item boxes for pity on the side as I so often do fly all over the place and miss the ramps entirely. We move on to pass by the brand new, much more fitting DK statue, replacing the crappy old Mario one that was there for some reason, past the snow piles that put a freezing effect on your screen if you go through them, and down to the snowy bumps that are a lot bigger than before. Probably a good change as you used to be able to skim past them fairly quickly. They've still got all the half pipes in the places that matter, with items to catch along the way, around this crazy thin S turn that has a void that has you fall forever, presumably to account for allowing gap jumps around here. I couldn't pull off the double, instead going flying off the map, but I got the first part of it, and it's really cool that they're keeping this. Adds to the fun of playing this wacky course your own way. That being said about doing it your own way, if you do tiny little hops off the half pipes for speed, instead of sending yourself 9,000 meters into the air, only to crash down into possible disaster, don't speak to me, you're lame. 
This ending section has the item boxes positioned before you enter now instead of during, which can actually result in more items being thrown around in there, a change I grew to enjoy the pure chaos of. And of course the audience still roars when you trick in this area, it's such a fun course with everyone crossing all over the place in a mess of items, in addition to trying to evade the shy guys just minding their own business tricking off the ramps. The graphics are quite nice on this one too, the snow texture's nice like I said it would be, there are untextured rocks but I don't really care that much here, they're not that prevalent and the Wii one kind of looked like that anyway. Anyway, they've got the nice snowy pine trees and ski lodges and ski lifts as the first of probably only two courses that are getting remade from Wii that haven't been remade before. I couldn't be happier they chose this one. Then there's the huge main event, Yoshi's Island. Speculated about for ages in the files of Mario Kart Tour with various assets ending in the code YI, this course lives up to the anticipation I had for this track, serving as a kind of crossover track in the same vein as the Hyrule Circuit, Animal Crossing and Urchin Underpass courses, with unique sound effects and replacements for items. But this time it's one that should have been an obvious Yoshi track from Mario Kart's very inception, Yoshi's Island, taking inspiration for its track layout from the title screen of the original SNES game by the same name. And holy crap, merely from the starting line this track hits you with so much life and detail. The gorgeous orangey grass, the stilt guys, Huff and Puffins walking around and starting in Yoshi's house from Super Mario World and Yoshi's Island of course with Poochie sitting on Yoshi's mailbox. This track is a love letter to the game and is a lot of fun. A really solid track with so many elements to drive through. The obvious starting field section, moving into a little forest spring, gushing water out of the ground, through a castle and a cave, a snowy mountain that shoots you out like a volcano into the clouds, where as you glide down there's a view of the hilarious looking Neppy Nut and a floating wing cloud that is f***ing impossible to hit that can summon a bridge with a much sharper turn than the regular path to launch you through the flower victory ring at the end of the level. And it ends with its own exclusive victory and results theme from the original game that's been remixed which is such a lovely throwback. But now to interject quickly with the something extra they add with nearly every wave, this time actually being a brand new character of Birdo. The first Mario Kart character we've gotten since the release of Deluxe in April 2017, like six years ago. I figure this time we only got the one character because she comes with a bunch of different colored alts, just like Yoshi and Shy Guy, but for some reason their colors are specified in brackets instead of at the start of their name. This is unlike Yoshi and Shy Guy, just to bring more inconsistency to this game to get under my skin. But her addition is quite a nice return with all unique animations and she fits right in except on the character select screen. This does show, however, that about five more characters are gonna come across waves five and six, which is super exciting to look forward to. I'm personally thinking the three Kongs, Diddy, Funky, and Dixie, as well as Pauline and Petey Piranha. They just make the most sense to me for some reason. The addition of new characters is so fun, especially if they add all these other fan favorites I've mentioned, and they're free with the purchase of the Booster Course Pass. It adds some nice extra value to the DLC and fixes complaints of obvious missing characters like Birdo and Diddy if they do bring him back that is, and should lead to this game actually having the best character roster in any Mario Kart game. Oh, and something interesting, they killed the Waluigi Wiggler meta by tweaking some character and vehicle stats. I can't believe it, but it's just been replaced by a new meta of Rosalinas and cat cars. F***. Well, kind of expected. That's how a meta works, I guess. Now back to the tracks, I don't think Boomerang Cup reaches the same heights as the Fruit Cup, but it is pretty great too. Bangkok Rush is an above average to a city track by default of having more to do than traverse plain streets, including top and bottom routes on a sky rail, tends to bounce on, and huge soaring glides through the sky. But I personally think they dropped the ball slightly with this one compared to its tour debut, with the Inky Piranha plants completely absent in the bottom section of the Sky Rail, which would have been wholly unique enemies to this track. In addition, they also have it so that you can't get up to and bounce off of the boats with canopies in the start section, which is quite saddening, as well as the weird, murky, polluted skybox where prior was more like a roaring, fiery sunset. They also randomly removed access to the top left side of the Maeklon Railway Market, sorry for butchering that, where in real life trains actually run through, which could have been interesting to see executed with an actual real train running through the course, with a warning or something as you enter. But ambitions aside, this track is still better than almost every city track in prior waves other than Sydney and Berlin in my opinion, but that isn't saying all too much. I do however really enjoy lap 3, going up the parking garage and bouncing all over the market, and then the chases on the railway line can also be quite entertaining with such cramped exits out of it. Then there's the standard map that's just sort of, yeah I guess it's here. As a very surprising pick for what's possibly our last Mario Kart DS track, according to a certain very prominent prefix leak, we have another Mario Circuit. We definitely needed them as the fourth one, 
fifth if you count Mario Kart Stadium, sixth if you count Toad Circuit as another really basic circuit track. So let's compare this one to Toad Circuit. I believe that's fitting as they're both very basic circuits that are in the booster course pass. In comparison to Toad Circuit, this one is actually rather pleasant to look at I find, with Peach's castle glowing as the centerpiece, cute little Goombas stomping around, piranha plants shooting fire at you, a whole new forest revamp after you exit the tunnel that wasn't in the original, a Wiggler sleeping peacefully that starts roaming around in lap 3, and then a twisty S-Bend to end it off for a bit of challenge. I think it's safe to say in the track layout and obstacle department, especially with quite the dynamic elevation, this track is definitely better than Toad Circuit. And although the visuals aren't amazing, they're certainly better than Toad Circuit lacking any textures, and it has these Mario Kart DS style trees brought in to replace the typical tour ones, that I think look way better. Sure still cartoony, but they don't look like they're ripped straight from a mobile game. And we have... Not the most detailed textures, but textures regardless on the jagged rocks, which is so refreshing to see. It's also quite vibrant in its colours, not blinding, but I feel it comes together quite well. Just disappointing if this map really does mean there's no chance for Airship Fortress, Delfino Square, or Luigi's Mansion. And now for the grand debut of the first Double Dash track in the entire Booster Course Pass, supposedly the first of four according to the aforementioned prefix leak, GCN Waluigi Stadium. Where the original took place in the sunset, I felt it was quite charming but appeared very muddy, dirty and had an overall blend of lots of oranges and browns, not the most pleasant colours. Certainly a wild track in its original and Wii port, adding the half pipes to it, with all flying jumps through the flaming rings, but the Booster Course Pass remake turns every element of this track up to 11. First of all, as always, the graphics and overall visual style of this remake is fantastic, with this detailed ground texture looking like a nice, damp and grippy dirt track, now with all sorts of construction going on around the sides of this newly renovated track, with mountains of dirt all piled around. The tops of the dirt piles here don't look the best, but almost everything else in the track does. With the new stadium look with a nice big scoreboard, with the whole stadium all highlighted so much better under the night sky instead of the dingy browns of before. This remake retains the half pipes the Wii version had, but makes them far more useful as to reach new anti-grav sections that cut and speed through certain parts of the track. Using them to flip up to these spots feels so f***ing cool, especially the end with its glide ramp to soar through the fire ring. This actually marks the first time new parts have been added to a track that isn't from GBA, and it feels like a really unique way that even the base game couldn't do as it lacked the half pipes. And it transitions so well into anti-grav because the half pipes are essentially anti-grav strips that shoot you into the air. The only bad thing is the removal of the speed boost to the final jump, but gliding through it is a much cooler finish anyway. And now for the risky finisher, Tour Singapore Speedway, ending off with a tour track. But honestly, this was actually a worthy finisher. The track starts you off shooting to the top of the Marina Bay Sands, driving atop the Infinity Pool with such a gorgeous view while doing so, flying back down to start lap 2. Although a short first lap, that's only a mere taste of what's to come. We go through lap 2 now, instead this time turning into Chinatown, where the tour original had a whole new arrangement of the track's theme for this area specifically. And of course 8 Deluxe continues this awesome idea as we drive through the cute little area with an abundance of detail and things to look at. We then continue the quite lengthy lap 2 to soar across the marina bay with this beautiful view and gorgeous looking water, with it shooting fountains up at you that are actually trickable. And then lap 3, for the first time in these tracks, actually begins with a different starting line, in a way merging the idea of a section track and a changing lap track together, as you drive with or against conveyors through the marina bay gardens. It's such a sight to see, even with the minimal graphical style of tour. But no, we're not even done, as you go through the helix bridge, gliding over the art science museum with the choice to land on a nearby roof, drop to drive along the water, or glide over it all, finishing of course through Chinatown once again to hear the final lap variant of the arrangement. What a track, it's easily the best city track yet with a much less confusing layout than any city track before, due to having such varied parts and adventures you essentially go on through the race. And despite the simplistic visual style of Mario Kart Tour still of course present in the track, the art direction for this one being at night time, as well as so wonderfully capturing the unique atmosphere and colourful nature of the Singapore architecture, as well as driving on and throughout it all in such a creative and unique way, it's all able to carry this track to surely be recognised as a pretty fantastic course. Wow, what a wave this time. They only keep getting better with honestly not a single outright bad course in here. And although the increased effort with the textures and detail continues to perplex me, I'm glad nonetheless that we are improving. I think this wave proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that if the tracks are fun and pass the fairly low graphic standards of waves 1 and 2, a lot more people are willing to look the other way and enjoy this booster course pass for simply adding more content to the game. 
don't ever discuss any Nintendo leaks ever again. Next time this happens, we will kill you. Eh. Or remove DK Summit from the game. No! Oh hey, I didn't see you there. You know, because you're a camera. Yeah, normally I would jump right into talking about Wave 5 of the Booster Course Pass, but I'm kind of busy at the moment hosting a funeral, so if you want to take a seat, I'm just going to say a few words. Thank you all for coming here today. I wasn't expecting such a great turnout. Um, we're here today to mourn the loss of something great, something elegant, um, something with a cool as f water slide made out of glass. It was simply its time. Uh, please join me in commemorating Wii Cooper Cape, joining the other botched Mario Kart Wii ports, you will be missed. Uh, please join me today in watching this short 15 minute video I prepared. Please like and subscribe, shut the f up while watching, and there will be no water allowed during the ceremony to honor the fallen. Wave 5 has officially hit, we're approaching the end of the booster course pass now, so we once again ask, will Wave 5 continue to up the quality, or have we already reached the peak? Well, with three more tour tracks, a surprise with Moonview Highway, a Koopa Cape port from Mario Kart Tour that was dead sooner before it released than the Wii U was, and a delightful looking bathroom track based on an asset leak that sounded really f***ing stupid, but might actually be good anyway, we'll find out if this wave is really as mixed as it sounds. But maybe it can push past the stigma of Tour City courses and unfinished textures to be a near-perfect wave regardless. It can, it's actually a really good way. Tour Athens Dash embodies the duality of man, at least in the visuals. For those who know me in this series at this point, I continually have a bone to pick with the artistic integrity of these tracks. This is because they're ported from Mario Kart Tour, the mobile Mario Kart game, and will skimp out on quality textures or complicated background designs that we've seen they're capable of nearly a decade ago. Now we've started to see continued improvement until now, still not perfect, but I believe far more acceptable than before. But some of it does still leak through, most notably in anything naturalistic, being trees, rock, grass or mountains, and the city tour tracks. But Athens Dash has some really nice texturing going on in its ancient era architecture scattered all over the place, looking quite nice overall when up close to the track, but then randomly far away, we see the funny clay world. But you know what? This track is tons of fun anyway. We're deep into the reign of the good tour tracks that I've been telling you guys would come. The design of this track in particular though, as aforementioned with the ancient era architecture, makes this city super unique, with huge jumps to take down a really creative cityscape, tricks all over the place, history to gawk at, caves to drive through, flying all over the place, this track is great. I especially love the part where you're dodging boulders and hitting dash panels. It's mainly a standout to me because it isn't just city streets the whole time, it's super unique and fun for it, and I can see it just being a blast online. And I love the increasing use of half pipes across Wave 5 ever since they were introduced in Wave 3. If you can use them right, they can be great for speed or items, maybe a bit unnecessary at times, but I definitely appreciate it overall. Damn, our Double Dash fans finally eating well after starving in the corner for a year. GCN Daisy Cruiser is a delightfully faithful remake of the track, functioning essentially the exact same as it did in Mario Kart 7, but with one of the best visual upgrades I've seen in the entire Booster Course Pass. This may be closest to the base game we've ever gotten, it's just clean and nice. It's got textures for everything, there are NPCs to sit on the tables as they slide around the dining area now, Goomba's just chilling in the pool, and the arrangement of the theme is so, so cozy. I've always been fond of this track, but I'm overjoyed they've been able to port it so faithfully and added a ton of charm in the process. It's nothing too crazy, maybe Base 8 could have added something extra to it, but honestly it really doesn't need it. It might just be forcing gimmicks at that point. It has the underwater engine room from 7, with some item boxes to snag between snapping clams, and a double item box on the way out, and the two paths opened up at the beginning just add some choice to the track. There really isn't much else to say on Daisy Cruiser, I'm very happy with it. And we continue this amazing cup with Wii Moonview Highway. Now as your resident Mario Kart Wii track nerd expert, I was very surprised to see this track return, and very skeptical as well. This course is one of the better traffic courses to ever exist in Mario Kart, because it had the balls to actually have an interesting track layout to go alongside the idea of dodging traffic. Blind turns, crazy flips off of cliff sides over a beautiful view of a moonlit lake, but it also had typical Australian drivers that would hit the gas once crossing through to the highway and change lanes like crazy, causing pure chaos in the track. It also had the funny bomb cars. 
Sadly, the city of Moonview Highway's council has stepped in and prohibited speeding and erratic lane changes, and also seemingly wiped half the population because it is far less dense of traffic now. But somehow, the automobiles that are literally mobile explosives continue to bypass regulation, which is really nice to see reintroduced for this track specifically. The track is still a lovely remake regardless of the easier traffic, with dash panels for speed, a stunning city with beaming lights, a lovely view of the moon, and the shortcuts with item boxes up here still intact. And when you play with real life players adding to the traffic themselves with the way more frequent and double items of 8 Deluxe, it is still a great time of a track. Not the most complicated track layout out there, but a great traffic course in particular. So with all of that combined, Moonview Highway is a blast and quite a good remake. And the phenomenal remix of the song with a hectic pace to it, and the jazzy variant for the highway returning, also contribute to the course terrifically. So to round out the Feather Cup is Squeaky Clean Sprint, making its debut in the Booster Course Pass as a Nitro track. And this track solidifies Feather Cup as probably one of the best cups in this entire game. Wow, this track surprised me, even after we saw it highlighted in the recent Nintendo Direct. I was worried it'd just be a boring circle, but with super polished visuals, pun intended, with heaps of easter eggs, super fun hazards to dodge, crazy alternate cuts and routes for items, and a super energetic theme to shoot you around through all the different crazy parts of the course, it's a delight. It's got some wonderful creativity to it, tricking off of bath bombs in a filled up bathtub, getting sucked into a tightly packed, fast flowing drain with items shooting throughout, with a giant ring and a bunch of screws lost in the toilet, it's got slippery physics with soap spilt everywhere, half pipes, and the ability to trick off of toilet water on the second lap ending to take a shortcut through a shelf and glide down to an alternate item route, or fly up next to the windowsill as well. It looks great, it feels great, and it's absolutely shot up to an all-time favorite course of mine in this entire game. I can't believe I'm overselling this course this much. I just really didn't expect it to be this good, and it's absolutely broken this pass to a whole other level of quality. Now to interject in the middle with the usual extra features they add, this time being three new characters introduced in this wave, Petey Piranha, Wiggler, and Kamek. These characters are all technically returning characters from previously in the series, Kamek notably from Mario Kart Tour, and they're just as expressive and as iconic as you'd hope. Far more iconic than Pink Gold Peach or the Mario Cannon destroying Baby Rosalina could ever be. Absolutely ruins a lovely part of Mario Galaxy's stupid ass baby. Thank God we got her instead of Diddy Kong! Wiggler is a bit of a wild pick for this wave, but I definitely don't hate him being here. He's quite funny to see driving, and a very unique pick, obviously. You can get Wiggler and the Wiggler car at the same time to celebrate Wiggler Wednesday. I love that his animation when he gets hit is the same as what it is for the mainland Mario games, becoming all red and angry. Petey Piranha is just a cool looking behemoth of a boss from Mario Sunshine, and he's always been fun to see around, making his first playable mainline appearance since Double Dash. And then there's the Mario Kart legend of Kamek, who was originally going to be in Mario Kart 64 and base game Mario Kart 8 in 2014, but clearly Nintendo's priorities lay with more important characters, like the frickin' babe. He's Bowser's right-hand man and is a magic Koopa. It's great to have him. He's an awesome middleweight for me to swap in when I feel like swapping off Luigi once in a blue moon. They of course also made the usual random cart and character stat adjustments, but also lowered the frequency of getting mirror and 200cc races online, which is great because they just do not want those very often when they log on for some regular Mario Kart with friends. I can't say I've ever had the itch to just hop on for some mirror mode especially, I don't think anyone has. They also fixed the red shell warnings going off even if they're not targeting you, and extended the range and the warning for red and blue shells as well just so you can live in fear some more. Now with the remaining two character slots, I can realistically see any of Pauline, Diddy Kong, and Funky Kong. Pauline is pushed a lot lately in Mario content like Odyssey, the movie, the sports games, and making her Mario Kart debut in Tua as the first new character for that game. Diddy Kong was in Double Dash and Wii, and is constantly appearing alongside Donkey Kong. Except in this game, I think it's straight up criminal that he isn't here. If Diddy isn't added, I don't know, I'll take a crap on the public road outside, he's 100% getting in. Which just leaves Funky. Sadly, he's probably the least likely to be added of these three. At first. But being the statistically best Mario character in Mario Kart Wii, a fan favorite Mario Kart game, has kind of given him a bit of a legacy in Mario Kart, infamously crashing the Mario Kart to a servers the day he was added to the game. I'm personally of the opinion that Diddy and Funky should undoubtedly be the remaining two characters that are added. That's just who I want, but if we get more female representation, I won't complain much either. But my wish would create objectively the best Mario Kart character roster of all time, with everyone from Wii, which is its competition, because it has Funky Kong. And that about wraps up my rant on why I really want Diddy and Funky Kong, not Diddy and Pauline. There is no third option. If you think this will genuinely happen, you're on a list. Can't wait for the characters to be only one or straight up none of these.
Now off of the character rant, we jump right back into tour Los Angeles laps. This track is a pretty solid tour one. I'd say probably not my favorite, but of course visually, it's pretty nice. Not perfect with some rather basic building designs, but especially this beachside drive off of Santa Monica Pier, I love the beach aesthetic, it was really nice. The track does have a lot to it, essentially being a section track, flying through Dodger Stadium and an oil rig. Nothing that's interwoven into the actual track design very heavily for 50% of the time, however. I think it's pretty good, but the remix is a tad weird. And that's kind of my thoughts on Los Angeles Lap, so a few bits of downtime, but otherwise quite enjoyable. Now, GBA Sunset Wilds. It's pretty nice looking, got some cute shy guys dancing around, a nice orange sunset, fairly simple track layout, but who can complain when it has the wonderful track gimmick it's always historically had, where each time you enter into a new lap, the sun lowers a little bit, it starts orange, then goes to a nice pink, and then the deep blue of the night. It's gorgeous, and of course Tua does it too. So being a port from there, obviously it's here too, it's not. I don't know why it's not, the main defining feature, just not there. A nice stroll through the red sand of the desert under a fading light into the cold night. But nope, they forgot it. So you might just be wondering, if the main gimmick of Sunset Wilds is gone, just what could the appeal of this track possibly be? Well, I'm glad you asked. This is such a letdown, because graphically, the course is nice, it has funny dancing shy guys, and the music is great. But with quite a basic, not awful, but very basic track design, the sunset changing would have brought it all home so nicely. This track sadly just ends up being the biggest Mario Kart 8 controversy since Bowser took a nice drive through Electrodrome with the Koopalings. It's a shame, making this wave just slightly less perfect now, and this somewhat continues into our next track, Wii Cooper Cape. Seeing this track in tour years ago, I was not impressed. The color palette has been absolutely destroyed, replacing the cool grey of the mountainside to a dirt brown, apparently the only color they know how to use for the f***ing mountains. They literally always look the same, and naturalism continues to persist as the worst looking aspect of the Booster Course Pass style, and now really only bit of contention I have with these tracks visuals at this point. The River Rapids section now has this ugly yellow and black construction tape on the sides, and it's been dramatically shortened. It used to be cyan and gold, and working with the grey of the mountain, it came together so well. It also just looks like Plastic World again. With it being shortened, it gives a super rough turn straight into some rocks here, where you had way more distance in the original to be able to dodge it. They also removed ramps for literally no reason, like the one that was there. What is cool is that they have a funny sounding remix for the water rushing section, which is a pretty nice extra detail they didn't need to add, especially with our next section also having its own unique style of a tranquil underwater direction instead, which just sounds beautiful. These three unique renditions really emphasize all the variety this course continues to offer, even despite being lesser than the original course in Wii. But this underwater section, once again, has been drastically shortened for some reason, and is all flooded like the change in Mario Kart 7 that no one likes or asks to return. We want the lightning that shrinks you back. It added an actual challenge, trying to keep the speed of the rushing water while dodging the electricity, unlike now where it's just an underwater f fest with people bashing into each other in an anti-grav section. It being anti-grav does add some level of excitement back to it from 7, but it just isn't as creative, whereas we've seen plenty of anti-grav done in so many other tracks. It's unnecessary to remove what makes this track unique, even if they add things like the random half pipe alongside it to try and keep it interesting, which does help, but only slightly once again. To some extent, it is still a lot of fun. At least the underwater area does look pretty nice. It's still fast, and I still enjoy playing it whenever I do, but it's not as difficult or aesthetically pleasing, which is extremely disappointing. Now to end it off, Tour Vancouver Velocity, my personal favorite Tour City track that I was very keen to see reintroduced into 8. A huge contributor to that is the music and the theme of the city as a whole, taking races through wintry woods and a nightfallen city. It adds a nice bit of anti-gravity through the suspension bridge, an idea I once saw in a custom track before the booster course pass was even announced, but was surprised regardless to see that they actually did it, instead of your standard direct port without a care. It goes through a park, an ice rink, a tunnel. It's nothing especially intense, but I find it relaxing. There's not much else to say once again with the tour cities, but it has some nice set pieces that don't just rely on boring city streets, and a visual style and theme with the cold Vancouver night to bring it all together really nicely with autumn trees and the winter pine trees, so lots of visual variety throughout. I love the deep forest and the ice rink and the nice little park you go through, it's just a pleasant course. That all being said, this wave was consistently great, excluding Cooper Cape, Sunset Wilds and the visuals of Athens Dash. Cherry Cup was definitely an inferior follow-up to Feather Cup, but the tracks aren't horrible at all, even with those mistakes. Sunset Wilds is probably the absolute lowest point by a mile, but nothing else comes to close to being like that. 
But with that said, I'll be back next time to end off this whole thing with Wave 6. Here's to hoping for Wii Rainbow Road and please for Funky Kong. So everyone, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed the video and um, please ignore the crazy guy in the window outside. He's not really there. You are all just blind to the truth. You'll see. You'll all see. Wave 6 of the Booster Course Pass was just revealed, but we kind of already know every single track they're going to announce. But to celebrate, I've decided to hinge a bet of everything on those 8 tracks specifically. This one's my favourite though, he could never disappoint me. Next! Hi, I'd like to bet one everything please. So how do I know you haven't already seen the track reveal video? Because it's on my to-do list. That means I haven't done it. Oh, that makes sense. Alright, you're good to go. Next! All right, broke idiots, I have the Wave 6 final track list in front of me, and in the most confusing possible order, it is DK Mountain, Piranha Plant Cove, Wee Rainbow Road, Rosalina's Ice World. That's a funny way of pronouncing Piranha Plant Pipeline. Ah, f me. So what'd you bet the tracks would be? <sighs> I've lost my fucking house. As of November 9th, 2023, we're finally at the end of the Booster Course Pass. After two years, six waves, and 48 tracks, we have our last eight to review right here before us. It's a little bit emotional, really. This might truly be it for Mario Kart 8, nearly 10 years after its release. We all thought we had the track selection well and truly figured out this time based on leaks, data mines, and just plain logic, but the Tua original Piranha Plant Pipeline was strangely absent and replaced with Rosalina's Ice World, of all things. Though overall, I think this is the lineup I've been most excited for for any of these. Tua Roma Vanti is pretty decent. I don't know why it's the only one to be named using the country's actual language, which translates to like, Roma Head, I guess. It has some decent jumps and trick spots, a nice view of the night sky. It's at least a bit more visually distinct than most of the Tua cities. I wouldn't say it's vibrant, but it's definitely chill and quite elegant, I think is the best word. Graphically, it's one of the best looking of the Tua cities. Not perfect, but the complexity of this one in its hazards and track layout definitely make a decent impression. It does get a bit repetitive with a decent bit of emptiness and reusing set pieces like the roundabout and the Colosseum, but at least the end with the chain chomps is quite a bit of fun. But screw the tour courses this time around because we got GCN DK Mountain, a much beloved track from Mario Kart Wii, I mean Double Dash. Yeah, this one was definitely chosen, once again, to favour the Mario Kart Wii Retro Track fans as it appeared in that game as a retro course, but has received a very nice glow up, I think. I always enjoyed this course, but upon replay, it was a bit empty at times and didn't provide the nicest view. You could see the edge of the world from the top, but now, wow, it's actually quite a nice view. They've actually got textures in a naturalistic course. This is the greatest character arc of all time. The mountain has some molten core texturing going on within it. The jumps have now been chiseled into the mountain itself to give it a fresh new feel as they don't send you way too high into the air like we did. There are DK barrels with bananas in them littered everywhere, maintained half pipes from the Wii remake, boulders as usual, and the gap cut here does indeed remain if you thought it didn't with a fence blocking it, but if you angle it up like this, you can clear it easily. And of course, the infamous Mario Kart bridge returns at the end as a staple of the track, missing the two handrails as it should. F safety. I quite like this course a decent bit and think it got a great remake, even if I thought maybe Dino Dino Jungle could have been a more challenging alternative with its stage hazards. But DK Mountain proved its worth to me as a chill, yet enthralling, atmospheric mountain descent with a few boulders and harsh turns to keep you a bit on your toes. So then why does Wii Daisy Circuit of all things come after it? This is even less challenging than DK Mountain is. I'm as big a fan of the original Wii courses as the next guy, but I don't know how highly Daisy Circuit ranks on that list. It is absolutely an adorably charming track visually with a suitable orange color palette dawned in its sunset setting and delightful shipping fuel for Daisy and Luigi with their glorious bronze statues. This track is full of personality. As a fan of these two characters, probably as my number one and two favorite Mario characters ever, and with a banger song, I can't help but have a soft spot for this track for giving some rare Daisy love. However, the track layout itself isn't anything too special at all. It's decent for a circuit track with some lovely views, but it's essentially all in its aesthetics. It has some added booster pads around the lighthouse here, and I like the returning opportunity to stay on the raised corner to take a tighter turn near the finish line, but otherwise it's a very basic layout. Not even its fantastic style and theme can save it from bare bones texturing and graphical detail in the buildings, which puts a bit of a damper on a track that relies so heavily on its art direction. 
It doesn't affect it that badly, especially when the course's arrangement lifts it so hard with some whimsical flute string harmony. It's pure magic what this arrangement does. I'm glad throughout the entire booster course pass, the music team has sustained some sky high expectations through to the end. Speaking of high expectations, Piranha Plant Cove is probably my most anticipated course of this entire wave. Do not get me wrong, I love Wee Rainbow Road and recently awoke some deep nostalgia for that track that lay dormant until this hype storm reawakened it, but I can play the original whenever I want. Seeing this debut earlier this year, I could not wait for the ultimate version of this track to come to this game, both graphically enhanced and combining all three crazy lap adventures it set out with in tour. I'm a staunch defender of Dolphin Shoals as someone who loves swimming, surfing, the beach, this entire aesthetic, but this truly evolves on the potential of that track, especially with three distinct laps each time through, the only non-city course to execute this feature. And it executes it with such finesse, barely a second of bland empty road to drive along because along comes the next thing to throw you into. A towering island over the cove, a glide over the water that'll dunk you back into the world of these underwater piranha plant ruins, and those ancient mysterious ruins to climb all around have countless Mario enemies at guard, including thwomps, piranha plants, morays, jelly beams, bulbers, cheap cheeps, and clampies. We've had action packed themes with Ninja Hideaway, silliness with Sky High Sunday and Squeaky Clean Sprint festivity with Merry Mountain, fun and nostalgia with Yoshi's Island, and Piranha Plant Cove ends it all with a sense of mystique and adventure, with music that only supplements that. I love Lap 3 in particular as you dive deep under the ruins to see a shipwreck, worshipping statues of Petey Piranha, and the territorial moray taking snaps at you to recreate the horror of Mario 64. This course absolutely did not disappoint and I'm so happy to say that it looks visually fantastic to boot. We've really come so far for the booster course pass, to assuage my fears of a graphical disaster. Now back in the intermission segment, once again, we've got the non-course content that gets added each time. Starting off, we have this list of random small but cool things, with balance changes of the invincibility stat for certain characters, lessening the time for item box respawns, again for some reason, lessening the frequency of online 200cc and mirror races, thank you, and adding room IDs so adding friends is not required to play online, perfect for streaming, and a music player. Pretty cool, but it should definitely just be on Spotify, but hey, it's something I guess. They also nerfed the item bagging by giving you crap items if you stop and wait, just sitting there to bring it up forward, which is stupid, so good that they nerfed it. Then for the big stuff, we got 17 Mii racing suits, including a daisy one through amiibo use to fit the rest, with all the rest having unique animations. This one didn't need to happen though. But the biggest addition of all is of course the return of Diddy Kong and Funky Kong in our last two character slots, rounding out the roster to hold everything Mario Kart Wii did, and more. Plus, the addition of Pauline. Yes! And Peachette. So Diddy and Funky of course have some wonderful trick animations. Diddy not being prioritized over so many other characters before him was so wrong. And Funky being here as a Mario Kart icon is perfect. He's so silly and was the meta pick for Mario Kart Wii. A true legend. Now with a surfboard too. Then there's Pauline, a wonderful addition to the cast after her popularity rose with her inclusion in the mainline 3D Mario series with Odyssey. But they didn't just put her in here for the limited female Mario representation there is. No, they really focused up her personality as a singer here, as she sings lines from Jump Up Superstar during her tricks, which is awesome. They didn't just port the animations for these characters right from tour, they gave them so much personality here to fit in, and I couldn't be happier with the selection of characters. And Peachette's here too. Now kicking it back to the courses, we're into the Spiny Cup first with Tour Madrid Drive. I did not have high expectations for this one, but it's actually pretty cool and maybe even better than Roma Vanti. It's close as it looks so stylistically indistinct from so many other modern cityscape daytime courses. But what it does have is a less confusing track layout in my opinion, with less blind and windy turns and far more attractions to visit. The first lap holds a station and museum, the museum even with its own theme and a piranha plant bursting through the painting with countless other adorable Mario artworks. We got a few random straightaways and boring roads here and there, but also a huge plaza with a sleeping wiggler with a soccer stadium to end it off. Overall, a pleasant surprise for a decent course that's quite hard to absorb fully due to just how stuffed we are with tour cities, this being the 14th but final one of the booster course pass. I think having two waves in a row with three each really pushed my limits with these in the end. 3DS Rosalina's Ice World shocks its way into our next course slot 
A track I never actually minded all too much. The music and theming have always, once again, held a soft spot in my heart. I have quite a simple brain, I see Mario Galaxy I like. It's definitely not the most interesting ice themed course, and something Rosalina themed could have done far more, but I've always liked snow themed courses a lot. It introduces half pipes before the jump here, which even allow you to bypass the cutoff to the top route that occurs in laps 2 and 3, if you use them for a hefty speed boost at the right angle. Oh, and there's also a new shortcut ramp near the end. Graphically, it looks pretty nice. The booster course pass has never really struggled at all with snow courses. Overall, it's got some decent obstacles about it, but it can be quite tightly packed at times, especially now with 12 players. And the last area is quite bland, even if I personally enjoy the overall style of the track. Now, SNES Bowser Castle 3. Super Mario Kart tracks have surprisingly never received a glow up like this one, with Super Circuit tracks getting their similarly flat tracks favored more for evolution in Mario Kart 8. So it's wonderful to see these previously faithful remakes get treated with a bit more effort to revitalize them for the current generation, with a crazy rework to the design of this course. Anti-gravity implemented up a giant lava fall, towering stone walls giving structure to the whole thing, with fireballs and thwomps as the castle defenders. Going from its source material, it's a fantastic glow up, with elevation and innovation wherever possible, and visually, it's absolutely at base game level. But as a standalone course, it's not revolutionary or anything, but a solid glow up. So now, speaking of glowing... Wii Rainbow Road. Where do I start with this one? In my childhood, this was the hardest Mario Kart track ever. Mario Kart Wii was my main childhood Mario Kart, even if I grew up with DS and 7 around me, this was the big one for those formative young years. I yearned for the day I could finally unlock all the characters, but was crap at the game because I was 7 years old. Wii Rainbow Road was the final gauntlet of the game. I could barely place any higher than 12th, falling through all the unguarded twists and holes scattered all over, consistently screwing up the half pipe flip, this sh** was impossible. But over the years, I finally unlocked all the characters and could semi-competently complete this course. I got better and better until Mario Kart Wii faded off the radar and I jumped to Mario Kart 8, the big main Mario Kart of the last decade, the one of my teenage years, to now, early adulthood. I've loved this game and put so many hours into it. Some of my best gaming memories are of course with this staple of my Nintendo Switch collection. I think my fourth most played game on it, only topped by my crippling Splatoon obsession and my desire to beat people up. Over all those years, my appreciation for Wii Rainbow Road only grew further and further, until now where I think I have to say, this is my favorite Rainbow Road. 3DS dazzled me with its big, huge adventure for a while, but I forgot just how much that final trial of Mario Kart Wii meant to me. How wonderful I thought it would be to fly through that course now, hundreds of hours later, thousands through so many video games since those early days, as Mario Kart Wii lays a relic of the distant past. So it feels fitting to cap off Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, my favorite Mario Kart of all time, with that marker of skill I always went back to. To finally and absolutely clear it and fly through all the beauty it has to offer once and for all. To be able to enjoy to its fullest now in a phenomenal remake, I can barely put into words how this remake feels, but I can try. From its mere opening, this track hit me. Seeing the majestic halfpipe flips sitting before me at the starting line, beckoning me toward it with a sleek rainbow chrome finish across the track. I wasn't sold on the tiley design of the track at first, but it suits quite well blending this course into the Mario Kart 8 style. The track does that super well all around, with the synthy notes of 8's Rainbow Road over the Wii theme, as it keeps everything that made the original so special, especially the good egg galaxy motif hidden away in there. Building further upon that, we have the same track layout as before, but now suitably entirely in anti-gravity, adding a more chaotic layer of tension and challenge as you slam and spin all around the other races, going neck and neck to see who can execute the tall order of this course. You can even manipulate it to clear the jumps around this middle section, but it's still quite tough without enough speed. An element I thought would be compromised for sure would be the meteor effect as you fall back toward the earth below, which mind you, looks fantastic alongside all the other added spacey visuals, but they re-implemented it for a second before Lakitu picks you up. Oh, and the musical build-up still lines up perfectly as you zoom through the beautiful launch star, bringing all the chills of the years of failed attempts right back as you continue to clear this interstellar spectacle. It's here that on my first time playing this remake, a lot of emotions hit me all at once. Just that swell of the music combined with the previously impossible flip between the split track, it was a joy to run through right to the end. This is the perfect end to the Brewster Course Pass and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as a whole. It really shows how far we've come, at least to me, 
And I'm sure a lot of you are out there too. Well, that's officially the end of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. We now officially have 96 tracks in the game, which of course means I'm probably going to do something really stupid to celebrate. Something very stupid. The end of the Booster Course Pass here would have surprised me a lot back when Wave 1 came out. Back then, I was not impressed with what we got, but it's come decently far. They actually found the Mario Kart 8 asset folder and textured things, improving progressively as the waves went on. They certainly never got to certain levels of base game quality and course design with driving on walls and upside down, but something like Piranha Plant Cove can genuinely beat out Mario Kart 8 originals like Dolphin Shoals. And we didn't just get tracks with the pass, we got a continuous stream of new content with every wave, with balance updates, new stats to mess with, custom item selection, a music player, and new characters that were actually better than most others chosen before them, not looking at any in particular. In the end, I was certainly happy we got it rather than nothing at all. If the level of quality of Wave 1 persisted throughout, I probably wouldn't want any of it. That wave is so f***ing ugly that it would retroactively ruin the greatness of Mario Kart 8 as a whole, with half the tracks being untextured, boring bullcrap, whenever playing online. But the track selection grew to include a slew of fan favorites and tons more requested features, so as a whole, I was really happy to see it all come around. They look mostly good to great graphically now. It was very, very rare to see the past match base game visual quality, but for adding 48 tracks so quickly, and for pretty cheap, with countless other features and free access to the tracks online, I think the price really did grow to justify itself. I think we ended all of Mario Kart 8 on a really positive note. I've heard talk that it's impossible to top this game now, with a ridiculous 24 cups contained in one package. But, even though the price justified itself for the Booster Course Pass, a fully new game of Mario Kart 8 base game quality tracks would be more than appreciated for most, even if they just do 32 tracks again as per the previous standard. But we better not have to wait a decade for Diddy Kong again in favor of some green bronze Luigi bullshit and baby Goomba. As for when we could see that next future Mario Kart release, well, we might just be done for a while. Or, who knows, we might just get Mario Kart 9, or 10, or whatever the hell it'll be called, launching with the next Nintendo system in holiday 2024. I'd even bet more everything on it.